Hey guys and welcome back. I uh, want to get this bike kind of put together and knocked out. I am not going to go crazy on it. I made the executive decision that uh, we're not getting into paint and uh, restoration cleaning stuff up. I just want to put it back together, get it functional and operational. So I have other things I want to get to. So having said that, that's what we're going to go do. So I've already looked up. I uh, have printed off the owner's manual repair manual for this that one of you guys had sent in so i have all the information as far as uh, fluids and volumes and whatnot and one of them is the fork oil what it gets and what it uses is actually 1540 weights fairly heavy weight oil usually they're fairly light like a transmission oil like a you know between like five between like three weight and eight weight is uh what a general fork is a average one uh, this one again being 1540 which i found kind of heavy but when i drained it out it actually kind of smelled like gear oil so uh, i don't think i was it was far off what was in it having said that figured out how much it takes it takes 200 milliliters and i have a bottle that has that written in it so i filled that up to the 200 mark i'm kind of letting it just run down And right there's your little list. So we go right to 200 on that. And I'm flipping them around and putting those in. Take care of that. And we'll button the forks up because these caps have to go on before the handlebars and everything. So I figure we'll get that knocked out. And maybe we'll kind of get into shining the paint up a little bit and then just start reassembling everything. Let me get the other fork done and we'll get on to it. So I'm bolting all the uh, triple tree stuff back together. The Speedo. Took it apart. You know, cleaning things as they go along. And uh, got the that manual offline and kind of chasing some wires. The wiring does not match what these guys are color wise, but I'm pretty sure that's where they were. And I'm going to leave it. And then when we run it, the only thing that's going to happen is a, a light's going to light up in the wrong location. And if that's the case, then I'll know to move, you know, the neutral light to the neutral location or the key on one to the key location. And I'll be able to figure that out. But I was into trying to get the headlight reassembled. I was tweaking the ears a little bit and getting them kind of square. And I grabbed the headlight and I'm going to go clean the bucket up. But the problem with the bucket is, I didn't realize it until now, is that uh, one side is ripped out. This is the nut. No. This is the nut that's supposed to be permanently uh, bonded to the headlight. You see this side going away too it's kind of cracking and busting probably took a hit at some point because i did have to straighten one of those ears out so we have to fix that again had i known i would have just bought a whole headlight assembly it was just a couple of bucks more but you know hindsight how that works i didn't pay enough attention when i took it apart so why don't we try and come up with something to fix that um, the way i'm thinking right now is we try to get some kind of fender washer and maybe we'll weld that right onto it and then get the nut where we want it and put a couple of tacks on the washer on the nut on the inside. That's kind of what we need to end up with, like right there. And that guy should probably run around and see if we can hit it with weld and try to attach the nut back to the body on this one too. I don't know what's got for chrome and stuff and how it's going to fight it. You can't really get in there that well to, to prep it. Give it a shot. So I took the bucket over to the sandblast and I sandblasted all the way around and I did the same with the one that's up top. And it's just kind of sitting on a bolt right now. I'm gonna guesstimate what's straight out of the bucket is and tack it from there. I'm thinking something like I'm seeing where it tore out. I'm just trying to make it so that those two guys meet. See if we can get a tack on that. Then I'll look at it a little better. And once I, if I need to flex it or move it a little bit, it'll stay at that point. And then we'll try to buzz all the way around it. It may just melt right away too. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to find out. So give her a shot. I got it tan, turned down to roughly 18 gauge. We need to clean the crap out of the tip. Hold on one second. That. Not going to do. Air can't come out. There we go. Shall we? Watch your eyes.
Let's go take a peek at that. Thought I brought the arm over. Let's see, actually it doesn't look too bad. Anything it's gotta go that way, just a hair. Let me go get the the light. I got the light. I'm gonna go look at that. It doesn't look too bad. Looks good that way. Anything maybe uh, here. Like that. Where is that? It looks like probably a hair. A hair up. Let's try buzzing the rest of that around. I could probably get it from the other side too. Not that concerned about the chrome. And that side, that'll be fun. At some point I gotta cut up a welding helmet for you guys. I got one that's up there. I wanna take the the section out and make something maybe the camera can go in. So you guys can see instead of just seeing white light. Trying to build some material up, which is missing all together. And once I got a little material there, I can come back and give a better. Adhesion. It's ugly, but we're not going for pretty. We are going for stuck back together. I guess I probably leave that one alone. I think the more welding we do on the outside of that, it's just gonna cobble it up more. Let's try to see how that one goes back together. I'd say we kind of do the same thing. It's missing a lot of material, but I think if we kind of find where it right there, tore out from, I think if we buzz around that, gets that some tacks going on there. Maybe we'll come back and we'll tap it with a hammer. We'll try to tap this material down a little. And then we'll just start filling. That's kind of why I want the, the stud in the center too. I don't want the threads to get messed up. So that's also there to help protect it. Let's make some sparks. Let me just wing it. I think that the arm that was bent took a hit and it kind of, you can see it in the case right there where it needs to be tapped out anyway. Probably should have tapped it out first, but let's continue getting that guy reconnected. Uh, maybe work on the outside of that one a little. I didn't sandblast that side though, so let's see what we get. Let's see if they'll hold up to some tapping. Let's see if we can get those two guys to play a little better anyway. Oh, 
my help, my weld helmets going down while I'm trying to. I get the, the nut flat there. You want to sit flat on your nuts. Just hack away at it. Let's see, that one kicks up pretty good there and then to nothing. So that's where it needs to be concentrated. Forward side, not so much. I need a different hammer, believe it or not. You guys didn't even think I owned another hammer, did you? Let's try, the, try this guy. I think I should probably try to get something. We can grind a section of a washer or something away. We'll kind of make that that letter C and try to put something back in there, and then we'll use that to bridge across. Back you guys up a little bit. So what I'm thinking is, what if we take a washer, patch that inside, right? But we want the washer to have a curve to it, like a dish. So why don't we try, we try this, but we are going to try it. Why don't we try putting in a socket, stick a ball peen hammer between the two of them. We stick it in the vise and we try crushing it and we'll see if it, if it will want to do what we want it to do. And if not, we will figure out a way to make it do what we want to do. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so let's go try the other vice. All right, let's reset over here. There's a room here. So you need a third hand. Okay, go. <laughs> Might need a little bit smaller socket. It might kink to one side. Let's give it a shot. Or it might be fine. That looks pretty good, huh? So it looks in the uh, headlight. All right. How many of you see my mistake? How many of you saw my mistake a long time ago? Do you see it now? All right. That supposed to be on the inside not on the outside so good thing that's only tacked in a couple of spots because I need to break that guy free and rotate it to the other side but I will show you the washer works out pretty good I will just edit that part out that never existed let's go with that like that Try to get a couple tacks on that first. I'll get the nut on it. Let's go with. We've got a nut that threaded on that. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, let me get a nut, a nut for that. I'm going to sandwich that right down together and buzz it. It's kind of leaning back. A little bit when I like. But I'm gonna throw a couple of attacks on the back side and then I'll loosen the nut up and we'll kind of pivot it a little and do the front. I took the washer, was concaved all the way around, and I, I hammered one side. So this side of the washer is flat and the back side has the curve on it to try to match the shape of the bucket there. And I bumped the welder up a little bit, to make it a little bit hotter.
Yeah, I like that. I like that better. That's going to be a little warm. Be fast. <laughs> Not that fast, I'm afraid. That might be good right there. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of hitting the hitting the vice a little. Buzz it the rest of the way. Go for broke. Definitely going with the welder hotter was the way to go. I'm going to stick the light in just a little bit here. Stick the light in, we'll look at it and see if you need any fine tweaking. Yeah, it is it's right here. Let's see. I think it's this one. Don't want to cook the wire. Yeah, gotta cool that off first. Doesn't go in. Am I encroaching on the threads there a little bit? That's oh, alright. I so don't want to booger up the threads. Should have flipped that nut around. I don't know if I can tap for that. I gotta look at that. And we'll skip right to the installed. I ended up taking a little, uh, uh, a little grinding stone there and whittled away. The threads were blocked a little bit by the washer. So I just had to open that up and I was able to get it. Actually, that side. They're both just as ugly. Yeah, that side. <laughs> and it looks pretty straight. Straight enough for me though. That's what I'm going for. It looks straight. It is straight. Is that the same? Everything's pretty sturdy. I put the rubber washers between the, the bucket. Instead of on the outside. I think they were on the outside before. But I figure for all the defor deformalities on the bucket that'll help take up some of the slack. All right, so what are we gonna go on to next? Oh, the suspension's good. I, I jumped up and down on that and much better. A lot, a lot of dampening now in the front forks where before there was nothing. I'll probably get the bucket in and do our best to get these wires and I, I numbered them with dots. See how those stayed on everything. Yep. Snowing again. Stinking groundhog. So I'm one of those moves where I'm just trying to put stuff back together. I apologize for not filming everything, but I just want to kind of get it done. Put all that stuff together. I have I mean, low beam, if I put power to the directionals, 
through the plug down below this plug if I back feed the plug I'll get each side to light up so all that stuff is complete and working just the flash part of it whether it be the the switch on the handlebar or the flasher itself is screwed up a combination of both of them I'm just uh, I'm over troubleshooting it I want to get other stuff done when I'll chase that stuff later but headlight high beam low beam indicator light uh, indicator light um, driving light rather works the two of the lights come on up here and then the other two probably are going to be directional when they come on I'm not sure of that and brake light and tail light so it's good enough to ride I think I want to jump on to something else maybe getting this guy cleaned up and see how that looks and uh, I don't know if I want to drain the oil out of it or what probably should you just have like big yeah big wing nuts and they kind of clip over the frame see it that should come up and off this one might be bolted on a little bit more than the uh, the access plate for the regulator and we'll get that out of there maybe uh see how this comes back That was easy. Just as easy as the other side. I would say we probably just cut that oil line. I doubt very much we are going to uh, use the oiler. I guess it is kind of notorious for it to go bye-bye. And the problem with it going bye-bye is you don't know it until you burn the motor down. Bring that over to the my oil recycling thing will let that drain. Well, that's finishing draining. Mail came. Good thing. Got a gas cap, condensers, points, and a headlight lens that doesn't fit and I don't need. That's the back side of it. I'm just kind of hitting it with some brake clean. And that just comes off like nothing. That's what I was hoping the rest of it was going to do. But I think a lot of you guys had it right. The, uh, when the person painted it, they probably sanded it down and then painted it. I could see where I was opening up some areas too. But I think some of that, the bare spots was done by whoever was like feathering chips, paint chips out of it or whatever before they painted it as you see on the back here they probably didn't do anything but just hit it with a spray bomb and there's really no there's some rope through there but I think that's from rubbing on the frame yeah. I am going to mask off that label so it doesn't get trashed and uh, continue on well, I hit that with uh, the lacquer thinner seemed to do the best over the wet sanding so the top was kind of wet sanded and the bottom was lacquer thinnered and I figured I'd stop right there again where the tape was it didn't want to come off but that's okay because it kind of matches the rest of it and that's the idea right so I think the next point let's task we should try is we'll go with some rubbing compound and we'll try to shine that stuff up and we'll see how it comes back I have a feeling it's probably gonna take a little bit more off that's what it is it's just the, the next step of of this you know but see what we get so I got this set it's been sitting in my uh, garage for an hour and what that has is little little tiny pads and this is the roll lock system with a, an intermediate pad right there but the intermediate pads are pretty much beat so I took one the foam is just deteriorated because it's so old I took one and I gotta get some of this off of there overkill took the, the rubber foam out and then spray glued the pad to the I got rid of the rubber in the middle of the intermediate pad, so it will still rip off now and change it out, but it just doesn't have as much cushioning. So let's see what we get.
me. to haze up wipe that off and see what we got so i have one in a different drill that's dry let's go see looks like it's gonna be pretty good huh Go and do the bottom section and then the tanks that could be the fun one. Shall we pull off the band-aid? Uh-oh, took some of it with it. Can you tell? <laughs> Don't look bad though. I think I had bumped it with some kind of the thinners and lost a little bit right there, but that's okay. Let's go see how shiny it is compared to the gas tank. Where are you looking? Not bad. Should we go for the tank next? What kind of sheen we can get on that? Getting shiny. We got the gas cap on there. I like that. Now that it's not so matte flat anymore. Kind of like it without the D, without the uh, side emblem. I'm going to put them on anyway, though. So I think the next thing we can get into is probably shining these guys up. I could rotate them and do them. So I'll do that, that, and we have. Reflectors that go on the side, we can put those back on. Let me get those knocked out. Yeah, I'll bring it back again. Yeah, it's it's turning on me. <laughs> For a while there, I was kind of iffy, but I do like it. I think it'll blend in once. Like this still has fingerprints and everything on it. But once this gets kind of shined up, you already see the headlight looks fairly decent. The case is fairly clean. The exhaust is eh. And uh, once the rear fender and this stuff and wheel and everything get kind of cleaned up, I think it'll be pretty even going across it. All right, let me get some more work done. I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. This is a cable oiler. And what that does, it allows you to take a spray bomb penetrant and pinch off the end of the cable and seal it to the to the jacket so that when you inject fluid into it, it the only direction it can kind of go is feeding down the cable instead of it all, you know, so you said it, you being there with like a little oiler trying to oil the thing in there. So we will uh, see how well this works out for us on this one. This is the throttle cable. So it's got like a, a staggered boot on the inside. And it goes, you know, wide, steps down, steps down, according to what size cable it is. And then it goes down to nothing on that side. So it seals around the, the end of the cable. Well, for the most part. Sometimes it shoots you back pretty good. Let's, uh, where's my... See it running out down there? No, you can't. I'll run out down there. So you can push right through the jacket of it. It allows you to get a push dirt out first if you want, and then. Amen. 
and then back feed it with a with a lube of sorts and she's nice and free so that's the uh the barrel for the throttle i'm gonna go put all that back together and put that back in the curb so putting that back together this tube i'm not gonna be able to show it yeah collapse it that tube right there that guy that's where the oil gets fed through so here's the airstream uh, flowing across and it'll draw oil in it's actually pumped in but it's in the stream of the venturi just like the fuel is uh, entering kind of does the same thing and the pump lets more or less in as you give it more or less throttle because that's why the throttle cable is going through the pump it's changing the ratio that the uh, oil is coming out to match the rpm of the engine so that's how they go about it we're probably going to go with just pre-mixing it because uh, it does not have a very good track record i don't want to damage this but it at the same token i don't want it to be in the carb if it doesn't need it it just kind of does not help in eating getting everything to flow so i don't want to damage it but i'm trying to get it out of there I don't think we're gonna hit it. Yeah, I doubt it goes. No, it doesn't go that way. I think it's just pressed in there. Just pressed in there well. Alright, I'll screw around with it. Let's see how that pump works. I got the cover off. The cables are. This is coming from the throttle. This is going out to the carburetor. And as you grab, I might as well show it. As you grab a handful of throttle, you rotate that guy, and that gives you more or less oil going out of this hose into that carburetor, and less. You see it kind of pull out on a cam, and those two cables are, gotta be able to do this. <laughs> those two cables are like that, and they're just kind of canceling each other out as they pull around that, but it's two separate cables. All that's oiled up, and it seems like it returns. So it should be pretty good. What we'll probably do is we'll run it with pre-mix and we'll leave this off. I don't know if that's going to affect having an intake leak up above the slide. I don't think so, but it may. Uh, what I want to watch for though, I just want to see what we get for oil coming out of this, if the oiler is working at all for whatever is left still in the system to go get pushed through. Uh, and we'll visit it at that point. All right, so that part of the evening. I didn't get as much done as I'd like to, but I like what I got done. Shinier. Front ends put back together. Lights all work except for the directionals. And they work when you put power to the to the junction under the tank. So it's close. I'm trying to get it to the point where we can kind of run it down the road and see how it is and make sure everything is, uh, you know, all is well on its innards. I'm going to run uh, 50 to 1. I might do 40 to 1. The book says 50 to 1. I'm going to double check on that tonight. But uh, we'll just do some pre-mix in the tank. The tank has been creamed before. That's some of it on the outside of it. So it doesn't look rusty on the inside, but it does smell like bad gas. I'm going to flush it with new gas. Dump that out and do that a couple of times. Use the gas as the, the thinner that breaks up the crap that's on the inside. We'll see how that works. All right, guys, that's it. Wind it down. I got a new one coming, the correct one. So as we work our way back, get soon. We can do a little test driving on it. Make sure all the, everything's good. So till then, later. So I did a little shopping. I don't know what you guys can see above this truck next to me. But a little small motorcycle swap meet. And yeah, it's in the spring. And I was able to find some stuff. We got tires for the Yawa. We have factory exhaust. These two are for the Jawa. And then these two guys are probably off of a Harley with fishtails. They're just gonna go in the hoard. And I think that's it. Brought the electric bike, but we didn't really need it. We got something.
<laughs> you guys thought you have a bad jump. <laughs> 